Yeah, today I'd like to start and show you some maps. Here's a map showing the distance from one of the two homes that Miguel Yobet owned in Barcelona to the um, workshop of Enrique Garcia. Here's a Google map, very helpful stuff in today's age. So one of the homes that Miguel Yobet owned was at uh, number four, uh, Ragomir, and that was a four mile walk or public transportation to get from that location where he lived to 455 Aragon where Enrique Garcia's workshop was. Another one, this is a picture of Francisco's home to the Enrique Garcia shop, less than a 20 minute walk, 2.2 kilometers 1.3 miles. So Targa lived at 234 Valencia and when he would take a walk or public transportation to 455 Aragon to go to Enrique Garcia's shop where he had his Taurus guitar repaired and he bought a 1904 and a 1906 Enrique Garcia bought number 43 made in 1904 bought number 74 in 1906 you've seen the videos that we have of this number 81 from 1907 on YouTube we also have 1897 Enrique Garcia made it 455 Aragon in Barcelona. Show you a few other maps. Here's the distance. One and three quarters miles, I guess from Tariga's home to Yabet's home. From 234 Valencia to number four Ragamir in Barcelona. Now the other home that Miguel Yabet owned was at 46 Laetana. And here's the distance. It's about three miles. Uh, due to the streets, it's a rather uh, curvy way to get there. Couldn't go straight. You could if you were going to walk through the parks, I guess. But uh, this is from 46 Laetana to 234 Valencia where Tariga lived. Here's a map showing probably a two and a half mile walk and this is from 46 Laetana in Barcelona to 455 Aragon where Enrique Garcia's shop was located. And here it shows a map. This is from one of the homes at 46 Laetana in Barcelona to 4 Ragamer that 
was the other home that Miguel Yabet lived at. Miguel Yabet passed away, I believe, at the 46 Laetana uh, home. And this was less than a kilometer away, so 0.55 miles, a little over a half a mile walk from one home to the other. So back in the 1st of June, I found this in the La Humanitat, the Humanity newspaper published in Barcelona in 1938. And it showed this magazine, Catalans, which I'm going to read an interview from. And I was doing research on a newspaper, Catalan language, online uh, storage facility. And I saw this where it said, La Vida del Guitarista Yobet. The Life of the Guitarist, Miguel Yobet. So I went and ordered copies of the magazines that I was able to acquire. Now, this magazine was published on the 10th of March, just 16 days after Miguel Yobet had passed away. The magazine itself had a first issue, uh, I think, two days before Miguel passed away. He passed away on the 22nd of February, 1938, and I think this was published on the 20th. This issue number three, you see these planes on the cover? Those are Franco's bombers. At this time, during the Spanish Civil War, Barcelona was being bombed Hundreds of people got killed, and those that survived tell the tale of that horror. So we look in the magazine. We see I've got this on my website already, where you see the photos. And if you read Catalan or speak it, you can see this. Apparently, this guitar here turned upside down is the last guitar that Miguel Yobet played before he passed away. Here we see a picture of another guitar. This is a Rebo E. Alcaniz guitar from the collection of Miguel Yobet. He owned three guitars made in this local shop. And you can see a well-known photo of him uh, on my website where he's holding this particular guitar. They said this guitar was missing the first string in the text. Now I'm going to sit and read the translation of this article. It's about 8,000 words, I guess. Catalan's issue number three, magazine article, March 10, 1938. This article in Catalan language was published just 16 days after the passing of Miguel Yobet. There is a lot of insight into the last years and days of his life. It's entitled, About the Death of Miguel Yobet. Subtitle, Above a sofa, a guitar is overturned downward. Subtitle in Catalan, Damunt un sofa un guitarra ajeguda. The guitar appears to sleep. The maestro, after his last study, left it on top of this sofa. No one returned to play it. All have respected the will, the last wish of the maestro of the guitar. To the right is the painting of Lopez Mesquita that's in the museum of modern art in Madrid. There is still a light on in the room where the life was slowly extinguished. In the almost gloom, the pale, serene resemblance of the master stands out, cold agony of a life that escapes on a flight, and a wavy voice weak like a sound of a sigh, a quarter tone higher, now, like this, that is closed off. On the stool near the bed, a phonograph, it plays Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The pale and the outlined hand of the dying man follows the beat as if it moving a invisible baton. It is the posthumous farewell of the artist to his God, 
and before the last bread, for the last breath, a sigh for the country. Catalonia, save yourself. These were the last moments in the life of Miguel Yubet, the wonderful artist of the guitar. He died exhaling, not a sigh of mourning, but of homage to everything that had been consubstantial in his life, art and Catalonia. The guitar had been silent for a long time. He has died still young in full glory, and he has died of a sweet death. After so long a time of suffering from a malady, it was no harm. It is said that he died of pleurisy. There were even uh, in the decades in between uh, confirmation, it was said that he was killed in the Spanish Civil War, which is not true but which undermines and destroys his sensibility as an artist. He has died of spiritual consumption. Yubet's guitar had been silent for some time. The last concert, his wife told us, he gave in Fagotas, uh, Catalunya in 1936. Then he didn't want to play anymore, he said. I'm not about to play now, he would say. When this is over, I will start again. Once again, take the route along the roads of Europe. What was your life like lately? He said he was now living a life of contemplation, as hardened as the cause, quote unquote, as he was, who had a just and a picturesque phrase for everything. He was now, every now and then, a self-portrait. At 11 o'clock in the morning, he would pick up the guitar and play until 2.30. Then he was going to take a walk. Before the war, the Spanish Civil War, the daily walk can be said to have always been through the streets, the squares, and the alleys of old Barcelona. Not now. Now I didn't want to go. You bet's artist's temperament, extremely sensitive, had a common thorn in his side the obsessive sight of that empty eye of the pine rosette. A few days before, Alfredo Romeo, who was a concert artist, a recording artist, and a music critic frequently in the Barcelona newspapers, along with Fernando Sor, Emilio Pujol, and Miguel Yubet, formed the quartet of famous guitarists that Catalonia has given us told us the other day, Alfredo told us the other day, didn't he? A few days before his death, I found him on the Via Laetana. How could I think that poor Yvette was so close to death? I noticed, I was worried, but I didn't pay too much attention to it. We must have it, I said. And what? How is the guitar? Do you play a lot? Yvette, with the greatest naturalness in the world, answered me. Bad, Romea, bad. I'm completely out of shape. His ten and his master. Today, when we entered the master's study room, just passing the visit through the spacious room, we were prone to capture the atmosphere that the artists like to go around. Painted canvases by Zuo, uh, Zulo Aga Mia Jimeno, Torres Casana Lopez Mesquita and its great treasure, the drawing of an original warrior chief by Rembrandt, his favorite painter, and in his place of honor, Beethoven, his god, and Targa, his master. He has been silenced forever, and on the sofa, a guitar that Yobet left upside down. She has been sleeping since the day Yobet left her there as she left her every day. This guitar I have silenced forever. Sadness is not allowed to be sung. It is but one of Yubet's 40 guitars. On the 19th of January, 1953, his daughter Miguelina gave 18 guitars uh, to the Museo de Musica in Barcelona. So there's 22 guitars that aren't known to be uh, in that collection. He had two homes. The photos I showed you from the article, those were taken by Joan uh, Andreu Puig Ferran, a 
photographer who became very well known. He had first had photos about 1932 in Barcelona newspapers. And so he was there along with Luis Melendez who wrote this article and he saw the guitars in the cases, those that were outside of the cases, maybe on a guitar stand or laying on another sofa or a chair. The other, the one we take out of the case is that of concerts. She would tell us like no other about Yvette's triumphs in London, Paris, Berlin, Vienna, Budapest, Rome, Milan, Buenos Aires, Havana, and New York, because Yvette's stage has been the world. His fame knew no borders with Thomas Edison. In 1931, he was invited to play in Washington, where a Spanish music festival is held. They paid him in gold to play for only 25 minutes. On the occasion of this trip, Edison invited him to go and give a concert at his residence. Yvette always told me that the greatest emotion he felt in his life was to be in front of the great sage. Since Edison was deaf, in order to hear the concert, he had to sit right next to Yvette and thus be able to support a pencil that he carried in his mouth on the arm of the guitar. At the end of the concert, Edison said that Yvette had played the music that had made him feel the most emotional his great passion. Apart from not having secrets kept from him by the mechanism of the guitar, Yvette was a musician like a house. He had such a fine ear that the most insignificant disagreement was for him noticed. The conductor Igor Stravinsky once said that Yvette could have been a great conductor. In 1904, Yvette went to Paris, his colleagues, his friends, but especially his colleagues became Claude Debussy, Maurice Ravel, Ricardo Vignes, very famous composers. And they heard Miguel play pianissimos, crescendos, decrescendos to double fortes. And it, he made it sound like an orchestra. But he was in love with the guitar. For the guitar he left painting, in which he quickly made his way when he was not yet 14 years old. For the guitar, he abandoned the possibilities of being a great conductor, and that, by the time he began, already has a great merit, a merit that glory has rewarded him, however. It was the time when the guitarist could only be told, sitting in a chair in vogue and accompanying a gypsy dancer. His great merit was to continue in Targa's manner and with him to undertake the task of rehabilitating the guitar. He used to say that it was one thing to be a guitarist, another thing just to be a guitar player. Simplicity. When Yvette returned to Barcelona after his triumphs abroad, a group of friends attracted by the glory of the master were interested in giving the women an intimate concert. At the end of one of the works of the concert, one of the listeners exclaims, Magnificent, magnificent, but that is not to play the guitar. Yvette, always attentive, replied, Yes, my friend, yes, that is the guitar. What is not the guitar is something other than you, surely, you have heard so far up until now. And this said without presumption because Yvette was the simplest and most frank man in the world. He had never been flattered by honors. He had never cared. Like so many others, and with less merit to cultivate his name, hence its low popularity even in the artistic environment of Barcelona. Right now, he hadn't played in Barcelona for about eight years, when his friends Pujol, Pau Casals, better known as Pablo Casals, great cellist. Pablo Casals was asked when he was 85 years old, why do you still practice five hours a day? He said, because I think I'm making progress. Musicianship is never completed. And Manuel de Falla, they all criticized him. He wished that he would come to Barcelona to rest for now, that he would have time to play. Can you imagine what it was like for Miguel to practice from 11 o'clock until 2.30 
in the afternoon, playing for three and a half hours. God, it's something else. Obsession. You bet, an artist's temperament was not a careless man in his customs and actions. You bet was a select spirit, not a bohemian. He was a slave to method and order. Punctuality was his obsession. He asked him aloud, for example, what time it was. And with the clock in his hand, he invariably told you the exact time in minutes. Once in Cadiz, he arrived at the port when the ship that was to have taken him to America had already been put out to sea. Not because he was late, but because the captain was wrong and ordered it to leave early. The obsession with punctuality comes to serve it even in the last moments of its existence. Feeling very depressed, he ordered her not to let any visitor into his home. One of the visitors was that of his great friend, Emilio Pujol. When his daughter told him, he exclaimed, well, let Pujol come in, but only for a minute. After a minute, he reached out and said, well, Pujol, until another time that you visit. Time goes by very fast. This was written by Luis Melendez. There is a caption next to the guitar on page two that I showed you at the earlier part of this uh, speech. And it says, um, this is the guitar of Master Yobet. Now it has to be silent forever. It is missing a string, the first one. No one will put it on. It will always remain as the artist left it. Thank you.